All right, so uh, I'm Sam from the Physics Lounge, if you don't uh, know me. Um, I wanted today to show you a little bit about uh, measuring and pendulums. So a pendulum is in, under the simple harmonic motion for level 3 physics, and um, the timing that we're going to look at is just using a stopwatch and some, some techniques for improving accuracy of readings. Um, so our pendulum setup, we have our, our boss clamp here, our boss heading clamp on a retort stand, um, we've got the pendulum uh, as a uh, fishing sinker, just a piece of lead, and it's tied to a piece of string. And we've got these two little blocks. If I bring that close to the camera, you can see that the blocks will clamp, and I'll try and keep those flat so that uh, there's no rubbing going on. And it's a single fixed point, that's the idea. Whereas if it's tied onto something, it can slide or swing or slip, and you have friction introduced as a way of um, unfortunately reducing um, the. Uh, the accuracy because you're, you're, you're losing energy from the system. So, and I'll use a, a meter ruler when I'm measuring the length. So I'll measure the length, and the thing about length measurement with a meter ruler, the smallest division on the scale is one millimeter, so that's your maximum accuracy. You can only measure to the nearest millimeter. Um, there's no point measuring half a millimeter because uh, it's, it's just, it doesn't give you enough accuracy to actually be able to say whether it's half a millimeter or point Five, uh, 0.6 or 0.4 or whatever of a millimetre. So you go to the nearest millimetre. In level 3 physics you would say your uncertainty is plus or minus the smallest division, so plus or minus one millimetre. Um, anyway, so I measure that. In actual fact, because of the uh, difficulty in locating where the centre of mass of the pendulum bob is, um, the centre of mass is where I measure the length from, because of the difficulty I would actually be more inclined to say it's plus or minus um, a few millimetres. Okay, so that's not a limitation on the measuring equipment, it's a limitation on the setup. And I just don't know exactly where the centre of mass of this is. You can see it's got slightly odd shaped, it's been bashed around a bit. Don't know where the centre of mass is, I would say plus or minus a couple of millimetres. In your discussion you would write that down um, as a, a discussion point. Okay, a source of random, um, is that random? It's going to be a systematic um, source of error because it'll be out by the same amount every time if you're consistently measuring to say the bottom of the the, the bottom of the um, ball, okay. Let's see. I'm just going to add an extra loop while that's winding up. So some things to be really um, careful of um, while you're uh, measuring, uh, while you're swinging your pendulum, is that there's no uh, conical pendulum motion. So conical pendulum. That's better. You can see that now on the screen. So conical pendulum motion is when it's swinging around like this. We don't want that because it's a source of uh, energy loss. We want to have a nice clean swing going in one plane and I can actually see that's slightly conical, ever so slightly conical. It's actually, in this set setup, it's going to be almost impossible to remove the conical aspect because um, the pendulum has, being a, a round thing on a piece of string which is essentially a long straight cylinder, there's going to be a bit of rotation like this. Um, I can't avoid it, so as, as the swings um, progress, as I let it swing, it's going to eventually degrade more and more into a, into a conical kind of motion. Um, so what I'm going to do um, is, is measure it before it gets to that. Um, when you're timing a pendulum, uh, it, it's very important to just start it swinging first. Okay, get it going and wait for it to settle into motion and then do a little countdown. So there's two things going on there. One is you're starting it swinging. You're not starting it at the moment that you release it. Okay, when you let it go and start it swinging, that means you haven't got it, uh, well, it doesn't stick to your hand or anything like that, introducing an error that way. Um, and the second thing is you can introduce a countdown when you do it this way. You can go, say, three, two, one, start. One, two, three, four, five, stop. Okay, really important not to skip out zero in your countdown or to be at least uh, sure that you're measuring five proper swings when you do the counts. Um, and you start and stop from the same point. You're measuring the period usually there and back is, is one period. Okay, So I'm measuring five swings, you noticed. You could measure ten swings for ease of calculations, but I measured five swings. My result, which is 5.36 seconds, I would divide that. I think it was 5.3, I could have received it already. Um, you divide that value by five to give the time for one. Okay, so that's a multiple measurement. A multiple measurement is spreading out the random error and the start and the stop over the entire five or ten swings. So let's do that again, just to get it going and you can see. 
So a small conical, I think we can do better than that. Let's just, let's just get it going. There we go. Also a small angle. Okay, it's not swinging from, from way up here to way up here. A small angle, because pendulum theory only works for a small angle of around about 10 degrees maximum. Okay, and most people measure more than that anyway. But So I've started it swinging. Um, and two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it was 5.18 seconds. So I'll divide that by five. Uh, in fact, what, I'm, what I'll do is if I had a table of results, I would repeat this three times, because that's another way of reducing random error from the starting and stopping. So repeat that three times, take the average of those three readings, then divide that average by five, because I've been using five swings. And that will give me the amount of time for one swing, the average time for one swing. If I'm looking at my uncertainties, I would take uh, the range of those three readings, um, you can see as this is degraded, it's getting more um, noticeable with that conical, just what I was saying before. But anyway, going back, to find the uncertainty for level 3 um, physics, you would take the range, so the highest value minus the lowest value, and you'd divide it by uh, uh, <laughs> divide it by 2, because it's half the range. Okay, So you've got the average, which is the middle value, and then the range of values from here to here, including that middle value. The range of values, you want to go from that average up to the maximum value or down to the minimum value. So that's why it's the middle value plus or minus half of the range because it's half plus or half minus. You see how that works? Okay, um, that's probably more than enough for this video. You can apply very similar uh, strategies of repeating and averaging and multiple measurements and um, countdown for your start stop to, to many, many different uh, situations. Mass on a spring, broken pendulum is the same. There's a broken pendulum. You put, let's turn this around, actually. Broken pendulum, if you've never seen one before, is where it uh, swings for a full length and then has a short short bit there. Okay, So you've effectively got two half pendulums of different lengths. That's a broken pendulum. Okay. Anyway, that's more than enough. Uh, hopefully that's useful for your internal assessments at level 2 and at level 3. Um, more get towards level 3. The graphing, um, there's separate videos for that. Thanks for visiting the Physics Lounge and listening to me rabbit on, even though I'm a little bit sick today. <laughs>